So next up in our Australian uh, 24 hour section, we have Professor Kai Rima and Dr. Sandra Peter from the University of Sydney. And these are the legends that we have built our two week micro credential sprint with. We're so thrilled to have them for the next half an hour to give a taster of what the fluency sprint entails. Um, and you'll also just see how good, as Kel said, their chemistry is. These people are incredible. I'm going to put in links to their unlearned podcast in the chat for everyone to check out. But without further ado, Hand over to yourself, Kai and Sandra. Let's go. Well, no pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where is okay, half my that. chemistry is missing? Me. No, we cannot yet. There you uh, are. Hello. Hello, hello. From different locations today. Thank you for thank you for having us. I do know that you said PowerPoint spree. Um, and we are going to go on a on a PowerPoint street. We have 48 slides and we do intend to get to them in the next 24 minutes. And uh, we are coming to you from um, some service probably in Nevada or in California. Uh, but Kai and I are on the University of Sydney campus, which is uh, Gadigal land. We acknowledge the traditional owners of, of the land, their elders past and emerging, and will share knowledge with you as people have been doing here for about 60,000 years, which never ceases to amaze me. So 48 slides in 24 minutes, um, get, get strapped in. Anticlimactic there. We're not quite ready for what's coming. You've been talking about AI for, for the past uh, uh, day. We're not quite ready for, for what's coming. We do know that there's very low adoption of AI so far in Australia. Only about 34% of, of companies are doing this. And we know that boards are unprepared for what is coming next. And the Productivity Commission has identified that it's really leaders' knowledge that is holding us back. So we're talking AI fluency with you today. So, or what you need to know about AI. And we'll do that in three steps. We'll talk to you about, but what is it? Because we've realized we actually don't really know what it is. Everyone's talking about it, a bit by like true love. Everyone's talking about it. No one knows really what it is. Um, we'll talk about AI in organizations and we'll talk about artificial intelligence and you, but we'll talk about a bit a bit about something else as well at the end, because for the last year together with Deloitte, we decided to actually do something about it. And when we say we, we want people to um, get some AI fluency, we, we, we did that for the past year together with Deloitte, we decided to do our bit to advance fluency in leaders, in executives, in managers, partners, clients, even competitors for, for that matter, because we think it's, it's what will make the difference for Australian organizations. So very quickly, what is it? But really, what is it? Nothing new is the answer. It's been around for about 66, 67 years, more or less, since a bunch of dudes. And yes, a bunch of dudes got together at uh, what they called the conference, but it was mainly like a two month summer camp um, in, um, at, at Dartmouth College and decided as the only bespectacled guy at the back there, John McCarthy said, to encode in machines to figure out how to get machines to um, mimic human intelligence and, and human learning. And the idea was that you could make intelligent machines. And the way you would make those intelligent machines would be to simply get them to do what we do, teach them everything we know. So for instance, if you wanted to teach them to recognize a cat, we would teach it everything we know about cats. It's got four legs, it's got a nose, it's got whiskers, it's got ears, it's got a long bushy tail and all that. But very soon something went a bit wrong because people realized actually there's a whole bunch of cats, right? There's, there's white a cats lot of them. <laughs> fat cats. And you know, even them bold cats, they give people with allergies. And very soon we realized that this way of making AI doesn't quite work. And all that money that defense and organizations and industries and companies put into AI started to dry out. So what we ended up in the 60s. And the 70s was the long AI winter. However, it persisted However. here in the organizations, in universities. 59 episodes later. <laughs> we did it differently. So teaching 
uh, computers, what the world is like, didn't work. So we figured we need something else. We need the computer to learn. So we invented what's called machine learning. But it's important to understand that computers don't learn like we do. So rather than for a computer to learn what a cat is, we figured, hey, if a computer should recognize a cat, um, all we need to do is give it a whole lot of cat pictures and let it learn what the patterns in those images um, are like. And the way we do this is by the computer making associations between patterns in pixels and words that have meaning to us, like what is a cat. And those patterns get enshrined in vast networks of statistical numbers. And those networks loosely resemble you know, structures we have in the brain. So we call them artificial neural nets, which is more or less a, a metaphor. So networks learn patterns. And when we give it a new picture, the idea is that it can make a prediction what those patterns are like and associate it with a word like cat. So we invented image recognition in a very different way. And this got supercharged, of course, by the internet because in the 2000s, we started to upload loads and loads of free training data for these algorithms. Lots of pictures to social media and other places where we said, okay, here's a picture of my cat. Lots of labeled data that we could use to build these large models. Okay, so this is the point where you're sitting there listening to us and going, uh, yes, yes, Kai and Sandra, but what is it? How does it work? What is so it really? What, what is it really? So we thought, you know, a cat is very complex, so we'll just take the number eight and very simply try to explain to you what happens when you do, when you show a computer lots of handwritten number eights and try to get a computer to recognize what, um, what the number eight is. All the computer does is translate that number eight um, trying to um, take the gradients, the shades of gray, and figure out what that number eight looks like depending on how dark every pixel is. That's all it does. And it does that for every eight we show it, for every cat picture that is out there in the world. It just tries to figure out how dark every pixel is. So the and number Sandra, eight. Yep. And Sandra, these numbers, these strings of numbers, right? If you show it an eight, if you show it a six or a seven, they look different. So we need to translate what we see into how the computer sees. And, you know, it's just numbers. Welcome to image recognition of the 80s and the 90s. But that is pretty much still what we do today. We translate how dark every pixel is into a string of numbers. Um, if we try to do that with faces, we basically do exactly the same thing. Slightly more complicated because you know we have um, uh, we have to account for the fact that you know faces have 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 shades can be in different lights and so on. But the same thing, we turn it into black and white because color doesn't matter. Remember, it's shades of gray, and then we figure out how gray the pixels are, and then lo and behold, lots of mathematics. But again, every face becomes a string of numbers, a set of probabilities that if I show it a new face, it will say that is likely the face of Will Farrell. At this point, you should push us because, you know, we're from the uni um, and you should push us and go, really, <laughs> but what is it? If someone asks me what AI is, and we've lo asked lots of executives, corporates, um, what AI is and people kind of go, yeah, it's that new thing, you know, we need to all get into, but what is it? What really is it? And we use this word in, different ways, right? Um, variously, artificial intelligence refers to a field of study that basically researches how machines simulate human intelligence, so a subfield of computer science. It also uh, refers to the ability of machines to perform those tasks that require human intelligence. Um, and in a, in a more practical way, it refers to a set of algorithms that make predictions by deriving patterns from data. And that's really important, that bit. Um, really what we do is we derive lots of patterns from data uh, to make predictions about you know, what the world is like. Um, and that can be useful in many different ways. So we said so, three things, one thing down, what is it? Field of study, ability, algorithm. Works uh, what can it do? How can it help you? So AI fluency is all about learning about how to use AI productively in your organization. And we loosely call this now bespoke AI or uh, single purpose AI. You use your data 
you use publicly available data to build algorithms that will help you solve a business problem. And we can do this in three different ways. We can augment what we've already been doing, do it in a bit of a better way. We can improve and optimize all kinds of business practices across really all industries. And we can reinvent things. We can do new things uh, in new ways. Breathe new and of course air we need it. for business practices. We can also come up with really <laughs> corny acronyms when we talk about AI. Yeah, everything needs an acronym. So, you know, fresh air for your organization with AI. So some of some of the most amazing um, uh, applications we 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 do see in in the medical field, and I've, everyone's probably familiar with the fact that um, AI um, um, disease detection, in this case, tumor detection, pancreatic tumor, um, um, breast cancer, and so on, has has really taken off since uh, since we've infused these technologies. In this case, this is uh, Johns Hopkins uh, Medicine in in Baltimore. It's a tumor for detecting pancreatic cancer. All of these technologies have really augmented the way people um, can detect disease and what doctors can do. And we're seeing human plus AI better than human and better than, than AI. But we must remember, given what AI is, that it does take a lot of time because I do have to teach the algorithm. If I'm giving it a, a, a whole set of, of, of images, I have to painstakingly label all those images and tell it, hey, here's where an organ is, here is how it differs from another organ. And for every one of those tumor detecting scans, it takes a researcher or a doctor over four hours to label every one of them. But once that's done, the advances are amazing. And not and only people, that, there are, yeah. People who know us, we will stress every other every other sentence data is everything right with ai we derive patterns from data so really with ai you want to invest in your data you want to have good data you need to label data but once you have that data you can do amazing things with it like you know and when we say amazing we actually do mean amazing solve some of our greatest challenges um, DeepMind has, has uh, predicted, has folded every protein known to man, which was considered one of the grand challenges of, of science and the structures. In this case, it's the blue ones that the, the algorithm folded match almost perfectly with the, with the experimental stuff. So the, the things that this unlocks can be quite amazing. So the first thing AI can do is augment stuff that we already do, diagnose disease, fold proteins, and so on. And we can improve a lot of things. We can improve farming practices. So turns out what works on humans, facial recognition, also works on things like fish or pigs. So this is an app from Alibaba in China that helps farmers keep track of um, their farm animals. So it does behavioral tracking, it does facial recognition to see um, which, in this instance, pigs might need attention, which ones might need feeding, um, which ones might um, show signs of distress, really helping farmers improve how they how they do um, their work. It also works on transport. So anyone who's taken a bus in New South Wales might have been on an AI-enabled bus. So what uh, Transport New South Wales is doing now, on key routes across the city, when your bus is running late, it can use AI to predict when that bus will arrive at the next intersection and then automatically green light the route to get you there on time. So really amazing opportunities that uses um, AI in innovative ways um, to improve and optimize business processes. Not only that, but, uh, and you're hearing from a lapsed economist, one of my first degrees before my PhDs was in economics. As a lapsed economist, not only can it improve or augment, but it can help us reinvent how we do things. In this case, what you're looking at is aerial um, uh, photography of, um, of, of oil tanks. Um, it's declassified satellite imagery. We're looking at oil tanks from above. And what we're seeing is the shadow cast by the lid. The lid goes down as the, um, uh, as the resources are depleted. So you don't get vapor. So the thing doesn't go kaboom. Um, but what you can do now, if you can um, look at the shadows that, that it casts, you can figure out how much uh, factories are using. And for instance, you can uh, come up with economic indicators that use um, 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 AI-enabled um, uh, insights to figure out what the factory production is at um, um, Chinese factories or factories around the world. So breathing new life into economic indicators that we have been doing the same way since the war. 
but it can also help uh, in, in, in more fun ways. It can help us reinvent how we think about marketing, how we think about advertising, how we think about customer engagement. What you're looking at now is a um, campaign from a couple of years ago by uh, fashion house uh, Balmain that is using digital humans, um, AI generated humans, the one in the middle, gorgeous Shudu. Uh, she's been in many campaigns. Uh, digital humans to um, engage customers to rethink how we do um, advertising and, and brand promotion. And this is now not just in um, uh, fashion houses, but also in automotive industry and in banking and a whole range of um, other applications. And it also shows how human ingenuity can turn something that originated on the dark web, so to speak, with deep fakes into a technology that can really be used uh, productively and also for good because there are amazing um, applications in, in the health field as well. So what do you need to do? You need to invest in understanding what AI means in your context. You need to know how it works so that you can think about it productively. You, you need to know about its capabilities and we have the capability stack that we use in the AI fluency uh, world, um, but also you need to know about what um, challenges you introduce when you use large amounts of data. So you need to, about, need to know about the ethics and how to build trustworthy um, AI. Um, and that's what, what you can do with us in, in AI Fluency and with our colleagues uh, from Deloitte. But there's more. But that's, but that's not all you can do, because at this point, I'm kind of hearing um, people on, online thinking, yeah, yeah, but what about the other thing that's been on the news for the last few what months? About what about ChatGPT? Um, so let's talk a bit about generative, uh, generative AI, because it's not just bespoke AI, it's not just single purpose AI, it's also generative AI. And here we want to talk a little bit about what AI can do for you, and of course show you more corny acronyms you can make up around artificial Be an ace. Be an ace with AI. Be an ace. Dangerous. Assist, create, and explore with generative AI, because it turns out if you, rec if you can recognize patterns in pictures, if you can um, figure out what a cat is, or if you can figure out what, what the number eight is, you can also generate text and pictures, make a prediction about what words, for instance, um, go together. And these new models are everywhere, right? If you've opened the newspaper today or opened your iPad today um, or, or watch TV, then you or know- Or have talked to anyone, really. <laughs> yes, they will or have tell talked you about to it. GPT this morning. So assist, create, and explore. And we're going to have a look at those three in the context of generative AI. So let's start with ChatGPT, the you know useful elephant in the room. Um, so again, we need to know a little bit about it. ChatGPT is what we call a large language model, not a knowledge model. That is important. So again, we build large models, huge networks of billions of what we call parameters, essentially mathematical functions that have been trained on the internet, on all of that text, the good, Wikipedia, the bad, that subreddit you wish you hadn't opened last night when you were got stuck in that rabbit hole. So all of that is in there. Um, and it can be really, really useful. Probably not as a, a Wikipedia replacement, but to assist you in your work. It's an amazing writing assistant. So um, I use uh, GPT-4 in this instance almost every day now. You can ask it, you know, write a two-sentence teaser for a two-week short course, which is called a sprint on the topic of AI fluence. Hey, the thing we're doing. And there you go. You get started on your writing uh, journey. Get stuck That's right into it, say. Embark on a transformative two-week AI journey with your intensive AI fluency sprint. Master cutting edge AI. Bad. Not, not half, half bad. bad. Not half bad. Okay, let's get right into it. Now write it in form of a Google ad. Give me three alternative ad, ad headlines, copy, and also show me the maximum uh, limit that Google has for each part of the ad. And there you go. You get your headlines, your descriptions. Just reorder it. That's a bit confusing, though. That's yeah, a bit put headline with the description. At the top and the descriptions, yeah. Yeah, next prompt. Put headline uh, and description. Bam, does it for you. Um, that's a good start. Um, next uh, task, we know what the modules will be because we developed it. AI foundations, opportunities, challenges, strategy, operation. Give me a table, number them, and give me short descriptions. And it 
comes up with those descriptions. They're not 100% accurate, but they're 80% there. I get into it, um, I edit it, and there is my little report for my boss about and what this thing point. is about. It's your assistant, right? It's your assistant, exactly. your intern. It helps out. Um, it doesn't and give it you is the really answers, useful. But it helps out. So um, learn how to talk to your assistant. That's the that's the skill here. The idea is it can not only assist you um, in doing things, but it can also create things. Remember that ACE acronym. Uh, I'm sure pretty. Mm. I'm sure everyone by now has seen this image of of, of Pope Francis in a uh, I think it was a Balenciaga puffer jacket. Um, an image created by by AI, not to mention, you know, the uh, Donald Trump images or Emmanuel Macron walking through a protest, all those AI images, yes, created by by AI. So good, in fact, that it does fool systems that have to recognize images. And it says, oh, it created even by AI, AI is confused. Look how good even I am. AI I can't is even confused, but we myself. can tell it. <laughs> we, we correct it and say, no, this is actually done by AI. So, you know, you're you're wrong. Um, but Okay, let's have a bit of fun, at least. Let's test okay. if you can tell, how good is it? And this should be easy because there's currently an exhibition in Sydney um, by the guy who took one of those pictures and the other one was um, made by us. We created with Mid Journey, a so couple of you've minutes got work. Five, you've got five seconds to think about it, pick one left or Three, right, which one was two, created by AI? One. one. Yes. Okay, so that one was left easy left. because it's a, it's a famous Human. picture. Yeah, right hand side, AI. Let's make it a bit harder. AI or human? Which one of these was created by AI? Can you tell? How good so is one this technology? Once a human uh, picture, the other one, we created a prompt for Midjourney to resemble the picture. Which one is AI? And reveal. Okay. Yep, the left one hand on the side, left. AI created. Maybe. That would have been quite hard. Um, play the roulette one more time. Which one is done by a human? Which one is created by us? Three, Which one two, of those one? ladies who are shopping? Oh, pretty hard yes. to tell, right? These are not too bad. And okay, we getting good. You, you need to get this one right because if you're this not one. getting this one right, then you will be in trouble. <laughs> human or AI? Yes, human. Uh, we, we did cheat on this one um, quite a bit. We did cheat a little bit. That is our version of it. Um, okay, uh, thank you if for If you being. need stock photography or any photography really in your task, and be it um, to go out to an actual campaign or just for that uh, brainstorming project that you're doing with your team, um, Midjourney, Dolly, these AI models really are your friend because uh, they allow you to create amazing pictures really, really quickly and in very but high not quality. Just create, right? We said assist you in no. doing tasks, create stuff, and explore. So, because what these models really do is they store patterns, likenesses. So they're really good at doing hypotheticals, things that didn't exist, might never exist, that allow you to explore ideas in text, for example. So here's one we prepared earlier. We asked uh, GPT, explore would have ha what would have happened to the Australian transport market if Qantas had gone bankrupt during the COVID pandemic. And the list goes on. We only have the first few, but it's really good to just get a start on what might have happened. The loss of a national icon, reduced competition. What does that mean? International connectivity, you know, big island at the end of the world, job losses, potential government intervention, rise of new players, and the list goes on. And you can then iterate on that to really explore um, with this, um, with this uh, model uh, what might have happened. And this can be applied to many different kinds of questions that you might have in your own uh, business world. But and just a small footnote here. Um, we have been using GPT-4 for, for these and um, for, for these questions, and we've been using Midjourney for the others. But there are many, many models that you can use um, that have come out of um, the US. There's many coming out of China now and so on that work in a variety of, of languages with a variety of formats that do not only text and images, but also now increasingly movies, um, do things at the intersection of text and images and so on. So this is just to um, to get you 
to get you thinking about the possibilities of this. And of course, and, with, and Sandra, with... it's it's so amazing how we, you know, how useful this is. I mean, we're using this on a daily basis now. Um, and GPT-4 now has a has a twenty five prompt limit over three hours. Uh, and sometimes yeah, I, I reach that very quickly and then, you know, I'm, I'm at this moment where like, I can't work without this, uh, with a tech, without a technology that I didn't even know existed like a couple of months ago. It's really, really quite amazing. Um, and I do but have here's to say, one more it, thing. it's also, it's also very useful if you just want to explore things you have always wanted to know, but could <laughs> never quite get a handle on. So for instance, what would happen if we made Kai into a Pixar character, right? Something you always wanted to know. And um, there you go. And of course, so there you, you go. Have... And you did this with my LinkedIn uh, picture, I which did you this can with just... your LinkedIn picture. I stole it. I made you into a Pixar character because who doesn't and... want to know what they would look like as a Pixar character? But yes. I would be remiss not to retaliate. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> there is Sandra and Kai as Pixar characters for you. Um, and this but, is really uh... what we're talking about, to explore ideas together. You can turn anything with anything into something new. Um, to come up with design ideas, to explore uh, business ideas, um, really the, the possibilities um, uh, around uh, exploring hypotheticals with this technology is where we see the main um, value to be. And you really want to be proficient in, in this. So this is what AI. Exactly. And really, so, this, is, this is not about it coming for your job. Um, no. But, but it is coming, it's coming for, for your job description. <laughs> uh, you, do, you do need to learn how to talk to your new assistant. It is a skill that will be as transformative as we had the internet or graphical user interfaces. You will need to learn how to talk to these things. And that will be true of everyone, not just of people who need upskilling or reskilling, but for every single one of us, um, no matter what companies we run or how many PhDs we, we have. And it's really the beginning of a very fast journey, um, which we're at, and we would be remiss if we didn't have, you know, those One steak knives for you. For you. <laughs> the steak knives for you. Um, so, so what, what should, should you, you do? do? Yeah, learn with us, um, get that badge. So there you go. Um, come the and learn with us. Steak knives. And, <laughs> and our colleagues from Deloitte, the AI Fluency Sprint, um, and we're really updating this uh, almost on a weekly basis. There's a couple more iterations this year, the next one on the 2nd of June, one in August, I think one in November. Um, every time we're doing new things, um, it's a two week to, uh, intensive. Yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's a wonderful way to, to understand fits in with your, your busy schedule, but over two weeks you will have the um, the best of what academia and thinking can offer with a very, very practical slant, apply to organizations, apply to your context, um, and really get you thinking about what this means for your organization in your context and for yourself as a manager, executive, or as a leader. And today, with the code, Hi. discount code, get $150 off. So there's your steak knife um, uh, ad for you. So Erica, um, that's it 48 from us. slides in half an hour there you go done on the dot a little bit of a teaser for what we do with AI fluency and there's way more where this came from <laughs> I absolutely love you guys you have the best chemistry ever and I'm expecting my steak knives uh, in the mail ASAP <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to our AI overlord in Kelly Nuttall to close out the Australian segment today and to hand over Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so oh my gosh. It. Sandra Kai, every time I hear you speak, I just get jealous of how incredible you are. You are just such a breath of fresh air on this topic and we absolutely love working with you. I've had heaps of messages in the background saying these guys are incredible. So thank you for coming and doing something so lovely and spending your time with us today. Um, truly appreciate it. Truly love working with you guys and, and uh, look forward to our next sprint together with you in June. So Very I believe you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no. Thanks, awesome. Kelly. Okay. Thanks, everyone. This was good, uh, good fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>